In our previous lecture, we have derived the Newton Coates formulas for numerical integration. <coughs> Out of this class, we have also derived the first two formulas, the trapezoidal rule and the Simpson's rule. Let us just see what are these two formulas that we have derived. The first formula that we have derived is the trapezoidal rule. in which the step length h is taken as the total length that is b minus a and we have derived the formula as integral a to b f x d x is equal to h by 2 of f of x naught plus f of x 1, where x naught is our a and x 1 is equal to our b. <coughs> we have also derived the error expression for this the error expression which we are written it as r 1 that is minus h cubed by 12 f double dash of eta, where eta is any number between a and b. From this we concluded that the trapezoidal rule integrates exactly polynomials of degree less than or equal to 1 that can be observed from this that the error term contains the second derivative of f therefore, which will vanish when f x is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 1. Now, then we consider the Simpson's rule using three points Simpson's rule in which h is taken as b minus a by 2. So, that we have got three points x naught is equal to a, x 1 is the middle point a plus b by 2 and x 2 is equal to b. Then we have derived the formula as integral a to b f x d x is h by 3 f of x naught plus 4 times f of x 1 plus f of x 2 and the corresponding error we derived it as r 3 is equal to minus h by 5 by 90 fourth derivative at some point eta a less than eta less than or equal to b. Now, from this we have concluded that because the error term contains a fourth derivative, the order of the Simpson's rule is order is 3 or which we call it also as precision 3. Therefore, Simpson's rule integrates exactly polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3. This happened because the error constant turned out to be 0 and hence the order of the formula has gone from 2 to 3 higher order Newton course formulas can also be used that means, using instead of 3 points we can use 4 point 5 point and so on. The next formula is also called the Simpson's rule, but it is called Simpson's 3 eighth rule if I use 4 points. That means, if I use 4 points in place of 3 that we have used over here, then that formula is usually called the Simpson's 3 eighth rule that is because the outside this bracket instead of h by 3 I have 3 h by 8 outside the bracket and it will be containing 4 points. However, this formula or the later formulas are not used much because the 4 point formula is also the same order as the Simpson's one third rule. Therefore, there is no point in doing extra computation that is of evaluating one more value of f x. We have one evaluation less for the Simpson's one third rule. Therefore, this is also of order 3 only and because of this reason we do not use this formula. Newton quotes beyond a certain order 6, 7 or 8 the weights that is your lambdas here they are all positive if you look at this here lambda 1 lambda 0 h by 2 lambda 1 h by 2 here also this is the all are positive therefore, there is no errors due to cancellation we know mostly errors also arise round of error because of cancellations. Whereas, if you go to higher order New Newton course formulas the some of the weights become negative therefore, there is a chance of some round of error therefore, the most popular methods of numerical integration is a trapezoidal rule Simpson's rule and some modifications to this to get better accurate methods. Now, however, if I have an integral in which the length of the integral is large let us say I want to integrate something like 0 to 50 f x d x. Now, I can use the trapezoidal rule, I can use Simpson's rule, but it is necessary to know how accurate it would be. The accuracy would depend by looking at its error term. If I look at this error term, this has got h cubed by 12 here, 
and this has got h phi by 90 here in these two formulas. When you take the step length in trapezoidal rule as 50 or you take in Simpson's rule 3 points that is step length is 25. Now, the error in Simpson's rule will be 25 to the power of 5 by 90 whereas, here it is 50 to the power of 3 in this. Therefore, the error itself is going to be very large in, in that case when the interval is large. Therefore, application of the trapezoidal rule Simpson's rule as it is it will give you inaccurate results when the length of the interval is very large. Therefore, we modify this such that this h is sufficiently small. In other words, h would be sufficiently small if I break the interval given interval a to b into smaller intervals and then use the corresponding formulas for each one of these integrals individually. So, such formulas shall be, shall be called composite rules. So, we shall call them as composite rules. So, what we do here is subdivide subdivide a b into a number of intervals. Now, the how many number of intervals it depends on you how small the step length should be. So, if you want a step length small corresponding will increase it. Let us first look at the trapezoidal rule how we are going to get the composite rule for this. Now, the we have seen that the trapezoidal rule uses only two points. Therefore, the way in which we subdivide a b is immaterial for us you can divide it into any number of parts. So, let us divide a b into say n parts divide a b into n sub intervals. That means, it uh, this would imply that we are getting n plus 1 points because this is n intervals therefore, we will have n plus 1 points. So, let us take this division as subdivision as a is equal to x naught less than x 1 less than x 2 and so on x n is equal to b. Then I will write the given interval into these sub intervals that means, given this interval a to b f x d x I will now write this as x naught to x 1 that is your first point to this f x d x plus integral x 1 to x 2 f x d x plus 1 x n minus 1 to x n f x d x. Furthermore, we will the all these sub intervals we are assuming to be equal when we started the trapezoidal rule it is equal. So, we can still put here an equal sub intervals they are all of the same length. Therefore, if I go a step behind if there are n equal sub intervals then the length of the interval will be total length b minus a that is the total length there are n sub intervals. So, that is divided by n that is equal to h there are n equal sub intervals therefore, b minus a divided by n is equal to h therefore, the step length that we are talking of is now b minus a by n. So, if in the previous problem if you have got 0 to 50 and I want a step length of 0.5 I will now have 100 sub intervals 0 to 50 100 sub intervals. So, that step length will be 50 by 100 that is equal to 0.5. So, we will have a step length of half. Therefore, the step length h depends on the number of sub intervals that we choose. Now, what we do when once we write this as this is equal to this I now apply the trapezoidal rule for each of these integrals independently. So, I will write this as h by 2 all of them have h by 2 outside because the step length h x naught x 1 distance is same x 1 x 2 distance is same x n minus 1 x n distance is same that is how we made them as equal sub intervals. Therefore, h by 2 outside I will then have corresponding to this I will have f of x naught plus f of x 1 that is the formula for evaluating the first integral h by 2 of this. The formula for the second one is 
h by 2 of f of x 1 plus f of x 2 and so on and the last integral will be f of x n minus 1 plus f of x n. Now, I can simplify the whole expression you can see that there is f x 1 here f x 1 here they combine and become 2 times f x 1 there is f x 2 here there will be f x 2 here they combine. Similarly, I have f x n minus 1 there will be f x n minus 1 here. So, all of them will be multiplied by factor of 2. So, I will have here h divided by 2 f of x naught plus 2 times f of x 1 f of x 2 f of x n minus 1 plus f of x n. Now, you can see that this is the first ordinate with a multiplied factor 1, the last ordinate with a multiplicative factor 1 only, but all the middle ordinates are multiplied by 2. So, 2 times of this one. So, this is called the composite trapezoidal rule and the effect of the error we must be able to write down the effect of the error on the trapezoidal rule. Now, let us write down the error what would be for this. I would write down the contribution of each one of them individually. We had earlier obtained the trapezoidal rule error at minus h cubed by 3 f double dash of eta. Now, I will have eta 1, eta 2, eta 3 corresponding to each one of the sub intervals. So, I would therefore, have h cubed by 12 f double dash of eta 1 plus f double dash of eta 2. There are n sub intervals therefore, I will have eta n where eta 1 lies in the first interval and so on x n minus 1 less than eta n less than x n. So, each one of them would lie in that particular interval. Now, it is easier for us now to write down what is the bound on this in error. So, I can just take the magnitude of this as magnitude of r 1 this will be less than or equal to h cubed by 12 h cubed by 12. Let us take the maximum of f double dash over the entire interval as some m 2. So, let us define m 2 as the maximum of f double dash of x over the entire interval a less than x less than or equal to b. Then f double dash eta 1 is less than or equal to m 2, this is also less than or equal to m 2, this is also less than or equal to m 2 and there are n factors. Therefore, it will be n times m 2. There are n factors here each one contributing 1 m 2, but n into h is a known value. If you look at it this is n into h is b minus a. So, we would like to throw away this n, n should not come into picture here. So, out of this n h cubed n into h will be replaced by b minus a. Therefore, this is same as I will put equal now b minus a that is n into h is equal to b minus a h square by 12 m 2 b minus a h square by 12. It is independent of the number of intervals except that b minus a is the total length of the interval. Therefore, in practical computation the order of the formula is still 1 because this is m 2 this is second derivative. Therefore, order of the formula is the same that is 1 it is going to integrate polynomials of degree 1 only, but now if you look at this power of h this power of h is the one that shows really how the trapezoidal rule is behaving. In the earlier case when it is very rough it is we are showing it as h cubed, but h cubed has no meaning when h is very large, but here h is small therefore, the trapezoidal rule is, is really behaving like an order of h square expression and it is integrating polynomials of degree less than or equal to 1 exactly. Therefore, this is the expression which we are going to use later on when we say that we are using composite rule to get still better results. Now, while doing the numerical differentiation we were repeatedly 
cautioning against the round of errors that it is possible that the round of error can actually swallow the, the actual solution and finally, we may have very bad results. But let us see what would happen here in the round of error. Let us first see what is the effect of the round of error in the trapezoidal rule. So, let us see the, what would be the effect of round of error, effect of round of. So, our i the value of the integral h by 2 let us write down f naught plus epsilon naught that is corresponding to this round of error corresponding to the first one plus 2 times corresponding to f x 1 we have f 1 plus epsilon 1 plus so on <coughs> corresponding to this we have f n minus 1 plus epsilon n minus 1 plus f n plus epsilon n and add to this the truncation error h cubed by 12 that we have it here this expression that is your f double dash eta 1 plus so on f double dash of eta n. This is how our integration rule is going to look up when we include your round of error and the truncation error in this particular expression. Now, this is equal to our h by 2 of f naught 2 times f 1 plus f 2 plus so on f n minus 1 plus f n plus round of error plus truncation error. So, this is our actual formula that we are using and to this we are going to add our round of error and the truncation error. Now, we have already derived the truncation error here. So, the truncation error bound is here. So, the magnitude of the truncation error is less than or equal to h square b minus a by 12 m 2. This is the bound for the truncation error. Now, let us write down round of error. Round of error is h by 2 out outside h by 2 I have epsilon naught 2 times epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon n minus 1 plus epsilon n. This is our round of error from here. Now, let us write down its magnitude also. Let us put the magnitude. Now, if I denote by epsilon the maximum of all these epsilon i's, if I take this maximum of this, then this will be less than or equal to h by 2 epsilon comes out. So, we will have 1, 2 into 1 plus 1 plus so on 1 plus 1 into epsilon. I have taken now common epsilon throughout and I have here 2 into 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. Now, the total number of points are n plus 1 points therefore, the number of these are n minus 1 because this is 1 point 1 point. So, n plus 1 minus 2. So, these are n minus 1 quantity. So, this will be equal to h by 2 1 plus 2 times n minus 1 plus 1 into epsilon. This is 2 n minus 2 2 to cancels I will have 2 n 2 also cancels I will simply have n h into epsilon, but n into h is b minus a therefore, this is b minus a into epsilon. Now, you can see that we really do not have to worry at all about the round of error the integration is a quite stable process because the error at the most is multiplied by b minus a if you have taken 10 plus accuracy all the effects at the most if the length of the interval is say 50 or each one of them is say 10. So, you are just multiplying 10 times that particular epsilon that we have got. Therefore, we have we are quite safe with respect to the round of error round of error here 
really does not affect that much as in the numerical differentiation and hence we normally say that numerical integration is usually a stable process unlike numerical differentiation which can often be an unstable process. The same thing is true whether I consider the Simpson's rule or any of the other Newton quotes formulas. Now let us derive the composite Simpson's rule, let us derive the composite Simpson's rule. Now when we derive the Simpson's rule, Simpson's rule required 3 points and we have taken h is equal to b minus c by 2. So, I need for each sub interval 3 points that means I should have only odd number of points in order that the Simpson's rule can be extended. Odd number of rules means we must have even number of sub intervals. So, therefore, to derive the composite Simpson's rule we divide a b into even number of sub intervals. So, divide a b into even number of let us take that as 2 n <coughs> even number of equal sub intervals. That means, we are taking b minus a divided by 2 n is equal to h. We are taking 2 n sub intervals therefore, b minus a by 2 n will be will be h and therefore, we have the points a is equal to x naught less than x 1 less than x 2 so on x 2 n is equal to b. So, that we have total of 2 n plus 1 points. Of course, this is our x naught plus 2 n into h that is you have got b is equal to a plus 2 n h. So, this is x naught plus h, x naught plus 2 h and so on we have x naught plus 2 h all of them are equal sub intervals. Therefore, we divide i integral a to b f x d x as equal to each one of them should contain 3 points. Therefore, I would take the first integral as x naught to x 2 f x d x. Then the next one integral from starting from x 2 to x 4 f x d x and the last interval will be x 2 n minus 1 uh, 2 n minus 2 to x 2 n f x d x. Now, when once you have subdivided into this on each one of them now I can use the Simpson's rule. Therefore, if I apply the Simpson's rule and the each one is subdivided into 3 parts therefore, that is which is nothing but h. Therefore, step length here in all the integrals is the same. Therefore, I would have h divided by 3 this is f naught plus 4 f 1 plus f 2 that is the contribution of the first integral plus the contribution of second integral starting x 2 to x 4 that is f 2 plus 4 times f 3 plus f 4 plus so on. From the last integral we will have f 2 n minus 2 4 times f 2 n minus 1 plus f 2 n. Now, we can simplify this and write this as h by 3 or let us write down i is equal to h by 3 f naught. Now, you can see that the odd suffixes of f all are multiplied by 4 f 1, f 3, f 5, f 7 up to f 2 n minus 1 all the odd suffixes ordinates they are all multiplied by 4. So, we will have this as f 1 plus f 3 plus f 5 so on f 2 n minus 1 except the first and the last all the even suffixes are multiplied by 2 f 2 f 2 there are 2 of them 
f 4 f 4 there are 2 of them. So, all the even numbered suffixes are multiplied by 2 f 2 f 4 plus so on f 2 n minus 2 and the last one again is simply f 2 n. Therefore, this is the first ordinate this is the last ordinate they have only multiplicative factor of 1 all the odd number suffixes ordinates have multiplied by 4 and the even numbered suffixes ordinates have got factor of 2. So, this is called the composite Simpson's rule. Let us also obtain the expression for the error in the composite rule. So, that we can make some comments about the behavior of the error. Now, let us write down the error R 3 we had written it as minus h 5 by 90 minus h 5 divided by 90 of fourth derivative at some eta fourth derivative at eta 1 fourth derivative at eta 2 fourth derivative at eta n. Now, they are divided into <coughs> 2 n equal sub intervals to have the 2 n plus 1 points, but each interval is containing 3 points. Total number of integrals that we have are only n integrals. Therefore, each one will contribute one of these terms as eta 1, eta 2, eta 3, eta n, where eta 1 is lying in the first interval x 0 to x 2 and so on. The, the last one eta n lies in this interval x 2 n. So, each of these integrals containing 3 points. Therefore, I can now bound this also and write magnitude of R 3 is less than or equal to again let us denote by m 4 the maximum of the fourth derivative in the interval given interval a is less than x less than or equal to b. Then I can write this h to the power of 5 by 90 into n times m 4 there are n of these terms. So, each one will be contributing 1. So, n times m 4 again you can see n into h is b minus a by 2. So, we will have here n into h is equal to b minus a by 2 that is the expression here. So, I would throw away n into h from here. So, that I will have here h to the power of 4 by 180 this is 2 coming from here m 4 into, into b minus a into b minus a well, let me write it once more here that is equal to b minus a into h to the power of 4 by 180 m 4 this is the actual indicator of the error in the composite Simpson's rule and it is therefore, of the order of h to the power of 4 and integrates of course, polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3 because we have got m 4 which is nothing but the fourth derivative. Therefore, Simpson's rule in the composite form also integrates polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3. However, the this is the real indicator of the error because now h is going to be sufficiently small very often much less than 1. Therefore, the actual error truncation error in the Simpson's rule is going to be very very small because this h to the power of 4. If you take h is equal to 0.1 this itself is going to 10 to the power minus 4. Therefore, the error is even though b minus a is large even then the error is going to be extremely small. Now, let us first take an example on this. So, let us take an example. Let us say evaluate 0 to 1. X upon x cubed plus 10 using trapezoidal and Simpson's rules with let us fix the number of points, either we fix the number of points or you fix the number of sub intervals with the number of points. taken as 3, 5 and 
Now here f x is x upon x cube plus 10. Now let us first take the results for the trapezoidal rule. Let us take the number of points as 3. That means n is equal to 2. If I take 3 points of the interval 0 to 1, what we are really talking of is the 3 points as 0 half n 1 h is equal to b minus a by 2 that is equal to 1 by 2. So, the step length that we are taking is h is b minus a by 2 that is and 3, three points are 0 half and 1. Therefore, the value of the integral would be i is equal to h by 2 that is 1 by 4 f of at x naught f of 0 2 times f at half plus f at 1 f at x naught plus 2 times f at x 1 plus f at x 2 that will be the value of the integral. So, let us now substitute. So, we would get here 1 upon 4 f x is this therefore, at x, x is 0 this is 0 2 times half 1 by 8 plus 10 I am just writing it x is equal to half as it is plus x is equal to 1 this is 1 upon 11 it gives 1 upon 11. Now, we will give you the value of this it is 0 0.04741863. Now, I am giving it intentionally say 8 decimal places because I want to use this later on for some other purpose. So, let us write it in 8 decimal places. This is the result obtained by using 3 points and the composite trapezoidal rule. Now, let us take 5 and 9 also. So, let us take points as 5. Therefore, this is simple mechanical application now that is n is equal to 4 h is equal to b minus a by 4 that is equal to 1 by 4 b minus a by n that is 1 by 4. Therefore, the points are 0 1 by 4 written it as 2 by 4 3 by 4 and 1. Now, when we are actually doing in a in a class or a test or anything we can retain the values of the previous one we should write down all the values because they are all repeated so, because this is a point which is already occurred earlier for a 0 half and 1. So, the computation that you have performed that is finding f x should be retained so that we do not repeat those computations again. So, we really to apply this 5 point formula I need to compute only these two values of f x 1 by 4 and 3 by 4 and the remaining 3 values are available in the previous step itself. <coughs> now, therefore, I will be equal to h divided by 2 that is 1 by 8 f at 0 2 times. Now, this is f at 1 by 4 plus f at 2 by 4 plus f at 3 by 4 plus f at 1. So, the ordinates the middle ordinates are all multiplied by a factor of 2 and the first and the last stay as it is. <coughs> now, this is simple computation. So, I will give you the value for this one. This turns out to be 0 0.04794057. Now, consider the case with 9 points. Let us take points as equal to 9 that is n is equal to 8 h is equal to b minus a by n that is equal to 8 that is 1 upon 8. Therefore, we will now have the point says 0 1 by 8 2 by 8 3 by 8 4 by 8 5 by 8 
6 by 8, 7 by 8 and 8 by 8 that is equal to 1. Now, as I mentioned earlier, now all these 5 points are going to appear here again. Therefore, this is this is the 1 point that is equal to 1 by 2, you have got 1 also you have your 1 by 4 is available and this 3 by 4 is available. So, these 5 values are available from the previous step. So, I need to do only these 4 ordinates to be computed at this particular stage. Therefore, I will have the value of the integral is equal to h upon 2, h is 1 by 8 therefore, 1 upon 16 I will have f of 0 2 times f of 1 by 8 so on up to f of 7 by 8 plus f of 1. And this value is 0 0.048072. Now, let us give the application of the Simpson's rule. Let us take the Simpson's rule. The question was formulated such that you can use the Simpson's rule. We have been asked to take 3 points, 5 points and 9 points. They are all odd number of points. So, Simpson's rule can be applied on those points. Therefore, the Simpson's rule we have let us take the first one points as 3. Therefore, the points are 0, half and 1 and h is equal to half that is the distance between this. Therefore, i is equal to h by 3. So, we will have 1 by 6 f naught plus 4 times f at half plus f at 1. Now, again I will leave this computation to you and uh, this comes out to be 0 0.4807333. Now, I go to 5 points. So, I have the 5 points as 1 by 4, 2 by 4, 3 by 4 and 1. So, that h is equal to 1 upon 4. we use these 5 points and write the given integral into 2 integrals each containing 3 points. Therefore, h is the step length that we are using there. Therefore, the value of the integral is h by 3 that is 1 by 12 of f of 0 4 times f of 1 by 4 plus f of 3 by 4 4 times this odd suffixed ones plus 2 times f of the even suffix ordinate that is this plus f of 1. This is 1 and 3 these are the ones multiplied by 4 this is 2 and is multiplied by a factor of 2. So, this value is I will give you the value as 0 4 8 1 1 4 5. Now, let us take 9 points. So, we will again have the points as 1 by 8, 2 by 8, 3 by 8, 4 by 8, 5 by 8, 6 by 8, 7 by 8 and 1. So, that h is equal to 1 by 8. Therefore, our value of the integral is h divided by 3 therefore, 1 by 24 f of 0 4 times all the odd suffixed ones that is your 1 by 8, 3 by 8, 5 by 8, 7 by 8. So, this will be 
f of 1 by 8 plus f of 3 by 8 plus f of 5 by 8 plus f of 7 by 8. Then 2 times the even ones. So, even 1 is 2 by 8, 4 by 8, 6 by 8. So, we will have f of 2 by 8, f of 4 by 8 plus f of 6 by 8 plus f of 1. I can make this computation and I get this as 0 4 8 1 1 6 4 5. Now, we mentioned just now that uh, in practice we do not use any higher order formulas beyond the Simpson's rule or Simpson's 3 8 rule. The one important reason is that we can apply the extrapolation that we talked of in the numerical differentiation can be carried over directly to numerical integration. The extrapolation idea extrapolation depends on write down the error expression for the given method, manipulate the computed results such that the new value comes out to be order higher than what we have obtained in the previous case. Now, therefore, if I want to obtain the extrapolation procedures for this it is called it is not called Richardson extrapolation here it is a different name it is called Romberg integration. So, let us define what is our extrapolation for this it is called Romberg integration. Now, what we really need here is the expression for the error for the trapezoidal rule and the Simpson's rule and that would come from looking at this the truncation error for the composite Simpson's rule and that has got factor h square. So, the leading term of the error for the trapezoidal rule is h square and I can show that the next term h cubed will vanish h 5 will vanish and so on. I uh, will take that result only. So, that I will have for the trapezoidal rule the expression for the truncation error as this i is equal to i I will call it as t for trapezoidal rule that will be c 1 h square that this part we have proved this part we have proved. So, now I will take the remaining things as h 4 c 3 h 6 and so on all the coefficients of the odd powers of h vanish. Whereas, for the Simpson's rule i is equal to i Simpson and for the Simpson's rule we have shown that the error is starting with h to the power of 4. So, it starts with h to the power of 4. So, I will have here is c 1 h to the power of 4 plus c 2 h to the power of 6 again here odd powers all of them cancel here. Now, if this is the result then we know what is the extrapolation procedure when once this is h square h 4 h 6 we have already derived the formula for this. So, I can just carry over the extrapolation formula to this therefore, let us write down what is the extrapolation for trapezoidal rule extrapolation formulas that is for t trapezoidal rule is it is h square therefore, we are kind of talking of we are reducing h we are taking h by 2 h by 2 square and so on we are assuming that we are decreasing by factor of 2 each time that we are computing then we have shown that this will be nothing but 4 to the power of m because when h is reduced by factor of 2 that is you you are going to have 2 square that is 4. So, multiplied by 4, 4 the previous value i t m minus 1 h by 2 minus m minus 1 h divided by 
4 to the power of m minus 1, m is going from 1 to 3 and so on. Therefore, the first column of extrapolation will have 4 times this next value minus the, pre the previous value divided by 4 minus 1 3. The next value m is 2 16 minus 1 this is 15 and if you have one more then we will have 4 cubed 64 minus 1 and 63. Now, whereas your Simpson's rule starts with h to the power of 4. So, let us push this by 1. So, 4 to the power of m plus 1 let us make it and this is i Simpson m minus 1 h by 2 minus i Simpson m minus 1 of h by 4 to the power of m plus 1 minus 1, m again going from 1 to and so on. Now, this is the formula that we can apply. Now, it is for this reason that we have done the previous example to the number of 8 places, so that we can use the Romberg integration on the example that we have done there. So, let us take this as an example. Apply Romberg integration. to the previous example. Now, we just go back to the values that we have obtained for the trapezoidal rule. So, what we are starting here is the step length that is we have here. Let us first take the trapezoidal rule. Trapezoidal rule. The order of the formula is h square. The first extrapolation gives me order of h to the power of 4 and the second extrapolation gives me order of h to the power of 6. we have done the example with starting with h is equal to half the 3 point formula. So, your first value of this is equal to half then we had 1 by 4 and we had 1 by 8 these are the 3 values which we have used and these are the values I what retained it there. This is the value that we obtained for this one that is 0 4 7 4 1 8 6 3. Then the next value was was this 0 0.04794057 and the third value was this 7248. Therefore, this column values will be obtained from the formula this for m is equal to 1. So, that is 4 times this value minus previous value by 3 in the next one element will be 4 times this value minus this divided by 3. So, this will be 4 times this value minus the previous value divided by 3. This is your h by 2 corresponding to this and this is corresponding to h. Therefore, if I multiply this by 4 subtract divided by 3 and this value I will give you as 0 4 8 1 1 4 5 5. Similarly, 4 times this minus this divide by 3 gives me 0 0.48 1 1 6 4 5. Now, the second column would come from this formula by putting m is equal to 2 the next step that is equal to 16 minus 1 by 15. So, I will have here 16 times uh, you can call it as i 1 h by 2 minus i 1 h by 15. 
So, I just multiply this by 16 subtract and divide by 15 I will get here 0 0.4811657. this result is actually correct up to this last decimal place except this last decimal place it is correct to seven decimal places. As we have observed in the numerical differentiation here also the Romberg integration along with these formulas can really work wonders in getting the resolution very very fast. In fact, in a in an example you can take a very complicated examples if it takes about few thousands of points to get a certain accuracy say 10 to the power of minus 6 by using Romberg integration you can get it in few hundreds of points. You can evaluate that integral with 50, 100, 200 and 400, 4 steps and then when if you do the 4 steps with the Simpson's rule for example, it will be order of H 4 we started with H 6, H 8, H 10. So, you have got a as if you obtained a formula with order of 10th order formula that you have got that is it integrates polynomials of degree less than or equal to 10 and the value that you would obtain the value the last value here in the first column will be I mean the error from this and this will be so large that the com the convergence has been obtained very very fast. Therefore, the Romberg integration or Richardson extrapolation in the other cases works wonders in most of these integration and differential formulas we would stop at there.